Hello everyone, my name is Amal Junaid and in this tutorial video, we will get our hands bloody, literally. So oftentimes, uh, we feel the need to add a little blood into our uh, scene to give it that realistic look. For example, this scene here that I did some months ago for a competition, I needed to add some blood splatters to the uh, pages of the book and the glasses and the floor and some on the sod obviously so to achieve this easily uh, i ended up uh, creating a node group which can be used to make blood splatters on any object and in this video i will show you how to create this node group or if you are very imp impatient you can directly download it from the description below. So one advantage of watching this video to the end is that you will get familiar with the basic workflow of adding any surface detail to your object. So be it scratches or some surface wear or stuff like that. This tutorial is not for absolute beginners. I will assume that you know some of the terminology and basic functionality in Blender. I'm using the version 2.92, but really uh, it can work with any version. So the version doesn't matter. First task is to get some good references. Just Google for some good blood splatters, uh, and then you can start working on your node group. So one disclaimer here, I'm not going to go into the details of what blood is made up of. So no details like hemoglobin, uh, red blood cells or water content uh, my goal is to make a good looking uh, material which can be easily integrated uh, into a pre-existing scene so let's set up the scene first i will shamelessly delete the default cube because that's what it is there for and then let's add the monkey and subdivide it a couple of times uh, and shade smooth so let's start to make this monkey look bloody because why not first we want to add a new panel with image editor and then add one of our blood images maybe add another panel and add one of the other blood images as well so now we have two references and then we can add a material so basically there are two parts to this process in the first part we will uh, create a mask for the blood which will define where on the surface uh, the blood spatters will go and how will they look like. In the second part, we will use that mask to create our PBR values or the material values, which would be the color and the wetness and stuff like that. So let's start by adding a Musgrave texture, which is a procedural texture. And you can quickly preview it on your object by Control shift and click and for this to work you need to have the node wrangler add-on enabled so let's quickly play with the values to see what we uh, like so if you look at the reference a blood splatter always has this big part in the middle and then these small drops uh, around it so that's just how blood splatters so that's what we are going for and first i will uh, define the bigger part and then we can uh, continue with the small splatters around it so let's play with the values a little bit and see what looks good So this is our basic splatter and what we want to do is now 
to extract uh, from it the bigger part of the splatter and then add the droplets in it so what I mean is that something like this will act as the main body of the splatter and then the space around it we can then use for uh, the small drops and then it can look realistic enough to do this uh, let's add a color ramp and then we can use the sliders to uh, limit our mask like so let's add another color ramp or just duplicate the one and let's uh, preview this one and we want to enlarge the mask a bit on this one and then we can subtract one from the other to describe the area in which the small drops will be so let's add a math node this to this and to here and then subtract let's preview it so now this node gives us the main body of the splatter and with this subtract we have the area around it and maybe we just need to make it a little bit smaller like so let's get another musgrave texture for the smaller droplets and let's play around the values until we see a good one let's make it a bit smaller maybe a bit more okay let's add a color ramp to limit it a little bit and make the edges harder this looks good enough now we can combine it with our boundary uh, mask to get those droplets around the blood we can do this by uh, doing a multiply between the two so using a math node we can do a multiply and now the drops are only visible in this uh, masked area now we need to combine this with the main body and this can be easily done with the add node so just copy this math node input the values and then add and it does not look good enough so maybe we need to adjust our main body a little bit so we can make it a bit smaller and we need to harden those edges so the transition between black to white is a bit uh, harder and i think i will also turn down the lacunarity so that it's not so turbulent I can also play with the scale of both the textures to uh, get something more of my liking. Now that we have a mask, we can now use it to extract our 
color and other uh, surface values to plug it into the material so let's just move it a bit back and then for the color we need to add a color ramp so you can see in our mask that we have these uh, very white areas in the center and then and around the edges uh, it softens up a bit and we can use this to create the same effect that the blood drops also are uh, a dark red in the center and then around the edges they have this uh, lighter red uh, tint to them so in our color ramp we can uh, map our mask to these colors so it's a good thing that we have our reference open so we can quickly select colors from it so for the pure white let's get the dark red color and for this uh, let's add it here and we can get a lighter shade to it and then plug in our mask into the factor and we can preview the color so we need to add some more transitional colors into it to make it look good so let's uh, add some more variations of red to it we need to add another color ramp after our mask to correctly map the values from 0 to 1 we don't need to do anything with it so now let's plug our color to a shader so we get another principal bsdf uh, connect the color let's preview it it doesn't look bad and now we can uh, apply this blood shader uh, to our uh, original material of the object which look like this to do this uh, we can just mix them and in the factor we can use the mask and it doesn't look good but the reason for that is that we need to uh, have a binary mask so zero and one value or a complete white and black mask to sh to tell our materials where the blood will go and where the original uh, material will go to achieve this uh, we can quickly get a map node and just uh, select greater than and use a very low value like 0 0.001 so now any uh, value that is greater than black will act as a mask so now it looks like this which is not bad at all uh, we can play with the settings of the textures and these color ramps a little bit to make it look a little better to make it look a little bit wet uh, we can uh, use our mask to control our roughness so let's add another color ramp connect 
connect it to the roughness. Let's preview it. And we don't need a very rough uh, blood material, but uh, we just need only a little bit of roughness. So to give it a little bit variation and let's see how it looks now. Let's decrease the specular because blood is never so shiny. Just a hint of it. And now I will use the same idea to get some uh, bump map for our blood. So get a normal map or rather bump map. Get another color ramp. Let's see how it looks. Let's increase this value a little bit. So now the blood drop has some volume it appears uh, let's decrease the strength and basically we can play around with these properties until we get uh, something that we like So now as you can see we have a really bloody monkey at our hand. So that's it, blood splatters in no time. If you want to use my uh, Bloodify node group uh, then you can download it in the description below and to use it you need to append the node group uh, from the blend file that I provide and then you can add it to your material and then you, you can mix it to your shader. So this was the original material and then add a mix shader node, mix the two and then with the blood mask you can uh, connect it to the factor and it works right out of the box. You can use these uh, sliders to uh, change the size of the splatters and if you want you can open it up uh, to change the color and other properties as well. So that's all for this video. If you have any questions or comments please write them below. Until next time, goodbye.